Hey, what it do with the business is? It is another week in the books with the On Deck TV podcast. I am Spike Lou. Man, I'll let your boy Animal Brown, Animal underscore Brown, if you're looking for me on Twitter and Instagram. Absolutely, man. I am Spike Lou on them same social sites. Holla at your boy, boy. We back at it. Been doing this thing a long time. Giving the people what they want. How you feeling, AB? Man, I can't complain. I can't complain. This one I'm excited for. Um, we got an action-packed episode. Doing an influential albums episode, but this time we took it to the Midwest. Okay. If you just tapping in, check out our Southern episode and our West Coast. This was Midwest, and we really don't get to talk about Midwest all the, a lot like that. So this going. To, I, I'm fucking with this. I'm excited about this. I'm gonna be real. Midwest. Yeah, it, this was a. Uh... The Midwest got some superstars, and we can talk about that once we get into the albums, man. But, yeah, this is definitely going to be an exciting episode. And I'm sure, just like on the East Coast, well, excuse me, just like on the West Coast albums, that we're going to forget some and people can have a fun time with telling us the ones that we left out, those true Midwest hip-hop heads. Where were you? For sure. And, and uh, here's the thing, though. This ain't a definitive list. No, you know what I mean? our favorites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is just kind of what was influential to us. Everybody got their own shit. That, but that's why we ask people to throw us some, though, because it may be different depending on where you're at. Absolutely. And it's going to be interesting to close it out. Will we do what, West Coast or New York or how that was, excuse me, East Coast or New York or how that breaks down? Yeah, for sure, for sure. But, man, uh, some other shit we're talking about on the show in addition to that, everybody has seen the viral video of Roddy Rich performing to a crowd that was word for word. And we mean literally word for every word. We'll talk about that in a minute. And T-Pain has some real interesting things to say about Tupac, if he was alive today, where his place would be in music. Very interesting. Uh, but first, let's talk some beef, Pauls. Funkmaster Flex and Conway have been going back and forth. Conway kicked things off on Instagram Live, saying that funk DJs like Funk Flex, Sus One, they were acting like gatekeepers. And that they get, need to get these old niggas out the way. They holding people careers <laughs> back. Funk Flex had time and clapped back on Instagram saying, sir, you are signed to Shady Records, Jay-Z, Interscope. You have plenty of resources at your disposal. If your career hasn't popped yet, then it's over, sir. It ain't got nothing to do with me or any other DJ. My question to you was Flex's clap back fair or foul? Man, this was interesting. And I think both parties have a case here. One with Conway saying, hey, you're a gatekeeper. Guys like you are holding on to that little power that you have. And he's right. I mean, that's what makes Funk Flex relevant. Whether you or I check for him for new music or not, he's still popping in New York, still got the station, still on the radio. Newer artists that are looking to get broken like that funk flex is the way to go and i'm sure at times that he can be snobbish about that i mean it comes with the territory it's a power that he holds and i think that conway is speaking from a position of a ceo not as an artist like yeah i'm broken nigga i got songs with m and j and all of this stuff and i'm popping i'm conway but i also have artists i'm trying to break i can't think of the name of his record label off the top of my head um, but he's always talking about it. He's always talking them up. He's had said very loudly, hey, man, I'm trying to do this shit from the CEO level. Mm. That's what I'm trying to do. So that more so to me was what he was speaking of. He ain't he don't need a nigga like Flex to break him. However, if Flex were to interpret that incorrectly and say, well, nigga, what you need me for is. Like he said in the post, you signed a management deal to Rock Nation. You with him. Nigga, you Griselda niggas was popping. Like y'all had the buzz out of this world. There's nothing on this planet that I can do for you at this point if you ain't done it already. Mm -hmm. Flex was right. But he's out of touch because I don't think that Conway was talking about himself. He's speaking from a CEO standpoint, his artist and the gang that he's trying to get on. I'm just, I'll am i look up the name of it when you tell me what you think. I agree 100 percent. This I, I interpret it the same way. Like two things can be right. Um, people they, Conway's not the first person to complain about gatekeepers in New York radio. We've heard this before. Flex has been with Hot 97, bro, since 1992. Several people have called for a, a new regime to come in, bro. Like that's happened multiple times. This is nothing new. This is not breaking news. Conway specifically said in his rant 
which I do think that Henny was getting to him, by the way, in the rant. <laughs> um, he said specifically, thankfully, I don't need y'all. Mm -hmm. But if I did, y'all would probably be baller blocking like y'all are doing other people. Drum and I, the that's first the thing I thought was that he was speaking on behalf of someone else. Yeah. I, that's what I thought when I heard his rant. Because he's good, or at least he should be good. I would right. think he's good. He said he was good. So I thought Flex's response, although true, he is in position to be successful because of his affiliation. I didn't understand. It felt like it was a deflection. <laughs> and because that is a fact, yes, he is signed to some big dogs. He has big dogs in his Rolodex. What does that have to do with you, Flex, being keeping your ear to the street and letting somebody new, uh, you grooming the next Funk Flex? Like, what does it have to do with that? You didn't address that. It goes to the point of what people say who say he's a gatekeeper. Bro, you out of touch. You damn near 50 years old. You can't be tapped in with this shit like this. And it's cool to want that position and power, but you just, you can't have your ear to the streets like a young nigga that's out here in Thursday and was trying to get in the position that you're in. It's just impossible. Yeah. So what you said was absolutely correct in the sense of like, bro, why are you responding that way? Right. Like, yeah, I am shining the M, I'm signing the J and 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 yes, those things are true, but what the <laughs> fuck do that got to do with you being a gatekeeper, bro? It make you look like an old bitter nigga. Like yeah. I'm just calling you out and you coming with the big guns, my nigga. You right. came back with the cannon. <laughs> Thankfully, I don't need you and I ain't gotta run up on you about this if I'm Conway. That's what I'm thinking. I can just let this shit go. This nigga trying to promote a podcast and do all this other shit. All I'm doing is calling you out for being a hater, my nigga. It's just like I'm just making yep. sure that you know you're a gatekeeper and people in the streets out here where I am, they don't look at that well. And like you said, like the response, like, bro, okay, what are you talking about? Yeah, that, I didn't, I didn't, but it shows being out of touch. Yeah, that just is, again, Flex is 53. He's been at the station since 1992. All people have been saying, and Conway is not the first person, dude, who groom the next person, bro. Like, you are. You are like, it's almost as if like, this is his whole purpose is this position, bro. And without this, who knows what this nigga, it'd be on some Shawshank shit, bro. Like, Facts. it's like, and fam, find something to do, boss up, dude. Exactly. <laughs> and that's the way that you like, I'm always talking about healthy competition in hip hop. I like the back and forth. I could appreciate it, but how you elevate the game, and elevate the culture. If you are responding to Conway and your funk flex, I'm showing you the young DJs that I got. All right, yeah. cool. Tap in this Friday. I got a roster of niggas that's finna drop some heat. Like, I ain't even got to touch the DJ spin thing. I got four or five young niggas that's coming with all new artists. Like, how about that? How yeah. about you do that? As opposed to responding and calling a nigga out trying to bring him down. I would much rather have seen that. People people complain because it, it doesn't sink. A, whoever's closer to this situation than we are, please correct me if I'm wrong. It seems like Flex is more concerned about holding on holding to his spot. spot as opposed to grooming the next group of DJs out of the city. Uh, correct us if we're wrong. Yes. Like Tell us you would think he was supposed to have a squad, nigga, Facts. like an Avenger, like a label. He need to be the first DJ with a label, right. bro. Any kind of DJ shit. You want Afro beats, R and B? Right. I got all the young DJ niggas is maxing out in all of them, nigga. And, That's and my label, saying, I mean, DJ, like a like a label with like yeah. a house of DJs. Yeah, not absolutely. The next yeah, niggas yeah. is gonna be me. If it's one or five niggas, they all in line right here. I don't know. Speaking Weird. of being out of touch, <laughs> your man's Meek Mill. Um, Press statement came out this past week, man, said he is no longer working with Rock Nation on the management tip. It's been about a decade, 10 years since he signed with them. Big things were supposed to pop off. Yeah, you can debate with yourselves whether it was successful or not. But my question to you, Animal Brown, for Big Meek Mill's career, big deal, little deal, no deal at all. Um, I think this is no deal. Oh, my God. And I'm, I'm glad he, he, he came out and cleared this up. Because, of course, the headline is going to be Meek Mill splits with Rock Nation. Mm. Oh, oh, what the fuck? Are him and Jay not cool no more? Like, really? He came out and said, relax. He tweeted, cleared up the, kind of the headlines. All I seen today was Meek and Rock part ways. I'm personally handling my own business so I can take risk and grow. 
We came to that agreement together. I have a label deal still with Rock Nation for my artists, and I got the reform super tied with them as well, many other investments with Jigga. So let's not look at, because you rarely hear of people leaving Rock Nation. Like that just doesn't happen. You hear a lot of people signing the Rock Nation. You rarely hear people leaving. And so I understand the fact that it made news, but Meek Mill feels like not a lot of effort was put into his last project. And you could argue that fans feel like not a lot of effort was put into his project from him. It's <laughs> him. It started with the bars and him. Because <laughs> the album was mid, if we're keeping it a stack. Uh, so he feels a way. Some people think this may be like MMG related. He's claiming it's not. Eh, maybe, maybe not. But I don't. I think it's a little deal, honestly. He just needs to get in the studio. If he's going to self-manage himself, go for it, bro. More power to you, but just focus on the music, bro. Lock that in first. Um, for that reason, I got to disagree with you and say that this is a big deal. And the reason that this is a big deal is because it's another headline for Meek Mill that's not music related. Oh. It's not related to, damn, that nigga album was banging. Or did you hear that Meek Mill track? Mm -hmm. Like, we still are talking about dreams and nightmares. <laughs> like we still talking about that I just seen that shit trending on Twitter About retiring the fucking song Bro It's cool if he wants to manage His own affairs I don't agree with it I don't see like you said Not a lot of people have left Rock Nation Like they ain't doing a bad job by anyone else But they doing a bad job by you <laughs> And then the label deal Like you said that's in place Like he beefing about Roddy Rich right now like right now, you're having an issue with Roddy Rich about the deal. Also, like you said with MMG, who knows the situation with him and Ross? It's true. No one really knows. And so for you to say, oh, okay, well, I'm stepping out on my own, bro. All of this confusion surrounding your career, you already ain't putting out good music. And now you telling me, oh, I can handle my own business affairs too? That's concerning for me if I'm a nigga standing next to Meek Mill. Like, bro, maybe you just need to focus on the music. And I get wanting to do the big dog plays. We talked about this with the Michael Rubin thing, not to keep bringing that up. I get being in those rooms, being exposed to new business opportunities, but you have to be careful that the thing that got you there, the thing that put you in the dough with Michael Rubin and got niggas coming to pick you up in helicopters out of prison stints is those bars, rapping, putting out hits. Now you may be able to do other things and graduate, grow from a business standpoint, and I hope that that happens, but it seems like the music has been forgotten and taken over your own business affairs. It don't seem like that that's going to help. Yeah, he, he claims that a lot of his vitriol is toward Atlantic, not MMG, not The Rock. But you didn't leave Atlantic. You left Rock Nation Management. Exactly. So I, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure what one has to do with the other. He, I'm sure he's tied in. He probably got a 10 album deal that he can't break and he's trying to buy out of it or whatever the case may be. Who knows? He said but, they told him he had to wait nine months to put out more music. And that's originally where his disdain started. From that last album, since he said he didn't like the response, he wanted to come right back out. But they told him, wait nine more months. But they wanted to push roddy project and of course roddy cool with that and he sided with the label they fucking yeah. with me in the building and now you telling me to wait because you want to re-up no now i got beef with roddy now mmg i don't know what ross got going on because i ain't taking this nigga calls because he ain't paying me enough and i'm telling hove oh no i got this i can handle all that. Man, that's that's crazy like you're doing a lot bro somebody gotta sit you down and be like you sure? I ain't saying you can't, my nigga, but are you sure this yeah. is the route that you want to take right now? Hey, man, he betting on himself. You know what uh -huh. I mean? I guess. Oh, so I, and, and then, and there's also that underlying he slick brought Roddy Rich to Atlantic, but they kind of yeah. plucked him from it. So there's from. a little bit of that. <laughs> too. But, and, and here's the thing that scares me about that when you say you're going to handle your own business affairs. Even he said, this is the same situation that I went through with Rick Ross. So, like, if you were in the position that Roddy Rich was in and you went through the same thing with Rick Ross and him and MMG and them trying to take you away from Ross and you know how that experience played out, it seems like you would have been able to better prepare for what was about to happen with Roddy and you put some game in Roddy ear or put your defenses up around the label taking him from you or even a whole play and trying to get him over there. Like, it seems like that would have happened. 
Yep. So when you telling me again that you run your own business affairs and we as fans have seen these things play out, I'm like, oh, I ain't sure about that, bro. Yeah. It's, it's, it's rough. It's, it's, it's gonna be a, a it's strong almost like journey. When, it's almost like when the when the athlete negotiate his own deal. Yeah, like with some Lamar Jackson type stuff. Yeah, you be and like, was, you be like. Yeah. Ah! And I seen an interesting thing about that to talk about sports for one second. Like um, that top ten list came out with Lamar Jackson, and they were talking. Of course, he should be on there. Top ten what though? Top ten quarterbacks in the NFL. Okay, okay. And Lamar Jackson wasn't on the list. And Peter King from Monday Morning Quarterback said that part of the reason of that is because he doesn't have an agent advocating for him in the room. All these other quarterbacks have agents. Advoc- I ain't saying it's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that what we talking about with me, like you need outside advocation, people with relationships. That's why an agent plays in it. Yeah. Like the relationship thing, building up your profile, conversations that you really shouldn't be having with your employer if you want to perform your best. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. That type of representation. Thing. I get it. It's important, man. It's very. Lamar important. Jackson's definitely a top ten quarterback, though. What He's all oh, facts. That's, yeah, that's like what? what? <laughs> Not on it. That's nuts. Like the the. But again, it made sense when someone who has knowledge of the situation. He's an insider. He was like these guys who are executives in the league. They just when another agent is speaking highly of their client and comparing them to Lamar, to Lamar Jackson, I can shit on Lamar Jackson all day because ain't nobody else gonna come in here and speak for him. Mm. So, who was number one on that list? <laughs> I forget now, man. Oh, no, so we know. Overrated quarterback. Oh, we know. <laughs> he was overrated, I believe. Oh, we know. We, we know who was number one. No, we ain't got to say it, guy. We know. I guess one equals one ring <laughs> out of 30 years in the NFL. <laughs> one, one ring. Oh, shit. All right, man. That's hey. our sports ran. What we got? Exactly, man. Next up, man, T-Pain. Uh, whew. This was a very interesting comment, man. T-Pain was on DJ Academics' live stream the other day. Uh, they got to talking about a myriad of shit. One thing, the conversation of Tupac came around, and T-Pain said if Tupac was around now with social media, because the conversation was what would, how would things have been if social media was around when Jay was doing his thing and Pac and X, Y, Z. Right. T-Pain said that if Pac was around with social media, he would have gotten murdered lyrically because his style compared to what other people are doing now is basic. And we would look at Pac a lot differently. His legacy would be remembered a lot differently if the social media was around because there'd be more competition. Um, fact or fiction, man? Is he paying on to something? Uh, big fiction, big fiction. <laughs> I have no idea what the fuck T-Pain is talking about. You're never going to get that to fly uh, with a podcast like ours with our age group and us growing up in the Tupac era. At least I don't think so. I don't know what you're going to say about it, but this is stupid. This is like to say that rap has elevated to a lyrical point. Like we just were talking about the lack of lyrics and there are not a lot of lyrical stars with the exception of J. Cole, Kendrick, and Drake, of course. But everybody else kind of got their own lane. That would be even bigger for Pac who had the most probably exclusive lane ever in hip hop as far as just being individual and who he was and not being able to be emulated because his presence was so strong he would be even bigger in this era with ig lives and doing wild tupac shit this nigga spit on cops shot at cops like Pac was built for this era and of course we're going to be biased because we grew up like under the guise of him being essentially the drake of our era right. so i'm not even sure what t-pain was trying to do other than make headlines which i've seen that's what x podcast is good for the headlines not really the content right. but nah this is not gonna fly it's not gonna fly at all like still today we're talking about pop for a reason it might not necessarily be his lyrics but what it is is what would have made him powerful in this social media area yeah this this was weird because at first the way he was speaking was Ak mentioned what if social media was around back then. So that's mm. 96. And then, but the way T-Pain was talking is if he was speaking as if, if Tupac was around now, right. which are two different things. Facts. So I'll speak to if Pac was around now. If Pac was Pac in 2022, I like I, like I get it. There are more rappers now. So you're going to have more people that are dope. There's Because there's, there's just more of everything. There's so that's going to happen. You could we could sit here and argue a couple of rappers that are out now or that have come out since Pac that may be better than Pac. 
Like, is yeah. Wayne better than Pac? Mm-hmm. Lyrically, yes, yeah. he probably yeah. is. Fact. Is Cole better than Pac? Probably so. Like, we could play that game all day. That doesn't take away from what Pac was doing or his impact though that, that's that's what's weird because there's a lot of things that them niggas can't i mean that pop can do that them niggas can't that is the thing so that that, that that like i don't know if t-pain was like trying to make a headline T, T- t-pain is very good content wise so that's true oh, yeah, for I sure like he was trying to do he, he is a great content maker so he was just trying to bring some uh lights to whatever project that they probably were talking about on that uh, um interview but these this is insane he just not a two. He probably just not a big Tupac fan, and, and I'd rather him fair. just say that. And that's fair. It's fair. Like I know we know people that don't like Pac. Sure. Like that ain't big Pac fans, but to deny the impact, like still today, mention Tupac name and it's a big headline. Rappers still today are talking about, oh, I don't listen to Pac. Like and that goes viral. Yeah. Or if you get a young rapper that does listen to Pac and shit, it's like, oh, let me check him out. Like it's still impactful today. Man, nobody really looked at Pac lyrically. Like, when, yeah, it wasn't. It that's was old never news, that. bro. Like, Even niggas, when he was popping, that's what I'm. Niggas wasn't looking for Pac for the lyrical, spiritual miracle shit. Like, what? Do you, but I, what? I tell you what, if I, you appreciate his lyrics, listening to some of the shit that you hear now, and you go back and listen to Pac, at least to me, as like my age group, and I go back, ah, oh, damn, yeah. some shit I can understand and. And listen, if Pac was on the freshman class, nigga, he's not getting killed lyrically, my nigga. Like, I don't know. <laughs> By Pick who, bro? Pick a year. <laughs> Come on, man. man. Before we get out of here and get to our most influential albums from our influential series that we're doing on the On Deck TV show, there was a viral video that released of your man's Roddy Rich performance, and the crowd was going crazy. A mist of going crazy, Animal Brown. You had a crowd full of Caucasians yelling, nigga. <laughs> Where do you stand on that clip? Yo, man, it, uh, this is always a funny conversation. And we've had this over and over and over again. Yes. I've been in places in concerts where the, uh, a large majority of the crowd was white and they were word for word. Again, with the N-word in the song. Uh, I... I I, I've, it's my opinion that if the artist it doesn't care, then I don't I don't understand why I should. Um, like Roddy Rich put nigga in the hook of the box, bro. If if he don't want people to respond in a certain and he's he's in London, bro, where I it was ninety seven percent black people in the crowd and that crowd was thick. It was a big dog festival. Yeah. So if you don't want people to say the word. And then don't put it in the catchiest part of your song. That, and that, and I, I'm sure there are artists who probably think that way. He just don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Or if you don't want to perform in front of those people. Who was that that said they weren't going to perform in front of majority white audiences no more? It was the, the girl. I think No Name, I think I want to say, or Tierra Whack. I missed that. Yeah, she said she was done performing in, done performing in front of predominantly white audiences. And that's wow. okay. That's a big yeah. business decision right there. Yeah, that's yeah, hey, go for it. Jeez. You know what I'm saying? That's fine. I think it was more of an argument to try to get black people to come out and support her shows. I, I think wow. that's what that more or less was about. Anyway, Whew. if that's what how you feel, then then say that and do that. But bro, if Roddy Rich don't give a fuck, bro, if fifty thousand white people screaming or or word for word reciting a song, bro. Why what you want me to do, dude? Yeah. You want me to care for Roddy um, Rich? No, I'm not. Yeah, I'm of the same vein with you on this. I'm not the nigga police, dude. <laughs> I'm not finna be the nigga. Like, what you supposed to do? Fight everybody in the Roddy Rich concert for saying nigga? <laughs> like, I'm good. Like you said, if he puts it in his song and he cool with it, then who the fuck am I to be like, oh, Roddy Rich, you should be held more accountable, bro. They making music. And he put it on his playlist, and you know what's gonna happen from that. I don't blame the crowd for it at all. And I don't really blame the artist for it, bro. Like, if, if I use this in my everyday vernacular, and I know that there's a big debate about the word, and some people like it, some people don't, but I'm making art. I'm being true to myself. I'm not going to avoid the word because it makes you uncomfortable. That's what art is. That's what I'm here to do. I can't help how people respond and react to it. Would I like you guys to skip over it and not say, nigga, great. That would be good. That would be awesome. We don't live in that world. And for people to continuously make these make believe problems up, I don't think it's fair to how uh, hip hop has grown, has evolved. 
Like, that's not a conversation that we even really got to have. Like, those guys are in there. I'm assuming or hoping that they're not some racist closet people that are just sneaking in the Roddy Rich concert so they can get a nigger out every once in a while between songs. I hope that those aren't the white people that are in there. I hope that isn't it. But, hey, if they are, man, shout out to them for buying a ticket and supporting hip-hop and and pushing the black culture forward just so they can say nigger a couple times in a concert. (laughs) <laughs> Otherwise, man, I really don't care, and I don't care, like you said, if Roddy Rich puts it in his songs, and that's in his way he talks. It's art. That's it's how he expresses himself. I'm cool with it. I feel like the people's expectations vary when it comes to this. Like I, I think people act surprised when they see this. Now, let me be clear though. Let me be very clear. It's cringe worthy though. Yeah, it's it's cringe. very cringe. If you've been somewhere, I went to the Kanye Yeezus show, and it was oh, thousands and thousands of white people, word for word, with blood on the leaves. Bro, I went to um, super cringe. But I went to um, what was it on the run tour? Is that the last tour? Yeah, he played um the story of OJ. Yeah, for sure. Super cringe worthy. Yeah, was, facts. This is Beyonce crowd, nigga. Yeah. Again, it's it's it, definitely it cringe. Like, I, want, I want people to understand it's definitely weird. Don't get it twisted. It's cringe worthy. Facts. But what I, I like, I don't. And what you want me to do? The white listeners don't try that shit at home. Don't be somewhere just trying and thinking, oh, well, I was listening to this, and they said they didn't care. Everybody ain't like us. And I get your teeth knocked out somewhere saying it in the wrong crowd, so use it accordingly. Look, look, it's, it's, it's things side are all about hooks context. Accordingly. No, th- things are all about context. And I'm going to be real. Like like I said, if, if you're the type of artist that doesn't want to put it in the hook, for this reason right here, it may, it may make you feel uncomfortable. I understand that. I don't, when I'm talking to white people, I don't say nigga, bro. Because mm. I don't want people to think that to get comfortable enough to sit here and, and think that they can say it back, though. Because yeah. to me, to just me personally, that makes a lot of people feel comfortable or it can make people feel comfortable and think we cool like that. And I ain't I cool won't. like that. I agree. I agree 100 percent. And I won't say that I don't say it. I may yeah, yeah. slip up, maybe yeah. with the type of conversation we're having. And just because I'm used to it in my vernacular, but I am, like you said, I'm cognizant of it. I do. Yeah, yeah. That, but again, that's more. just me, though. If somebody else may be like, no, I'm fuck. Like, I get it. I notice it. it more when I'm talking to white people. Facts. For sure. Yeah. yeah but this interesting. The video was funny, though. Man. Very much so. <laughs> uh, hey, man, look, we back to the Midwest, dog. We don't went to the South, went to the West. Now we hit Midwest. We're going to park in the East Coast another week, maybe next week, maybe another week after that. Who knows? But for now, Take it to the Midwest, and we know what that is, man. Chicago, Michigan, the Lou, Ohio. We know what the Midwest is. We got a number of essential albums. I'm sure we've got a couple of on here that overlap, and then we got a couple that's specific to our taste. Um, give me what what do you think? You got some that you think I, I got on my list? That I think you do have? Uh yeah. Kanye, college dropout, and Eminem Slim Shade. Mmm. I don't have those. Neither one. I I have a Kanye and an Eminem. Because I know you have those albums. Those but not those two, though. Why okay. those two? Country Grandma, of course, man. No, you said, are... you said Kanye and Eminem. Well, excuse me. Kanye, College Dropout, and Eminem Slim Shade. Yeah. Little spoiler alert with the Country Grandma. But uh, with that being said, these are the biggest two stars from the Midwest. Yeah. Easily. And I picked their essential albums, the one that kind of set the tone for their careers. May not necessarily, as I was saying when we did the West Coast, be my favorite ones of their albums or the best, but I feel like this is the one that broke the door down and when they still had like that Midwest on them. There was still a whole lot of Chicago on that college dropout album. Uh, you could tell the, some of the stuff that Kanye was paying respect to there. That's why I picked that one for this. And same thing with Eminem. Still a whole lot of Detroit, Cypher, underground shit of where he came from on that album. He came out the gate as a big dog, but you could tell the growth from where they became as big ass stars to their Midwest beginnings. And I think that these albums really define their Midwest beginnings. Now I, I thought about going with the with the major label debuts. I definitely mm-hmm. thought about that, but I, I decided to go with 808s and Heartbreaks mm. and Marshall Mathers LP. Reason being, 808s. We know what 808s did to the game in terms of the auto tune rappers singing, like that ushered in a whole wave right before the Drake wave, like tsunami the door down. 
but this one right here was an 808 was knocking on it so i just i just tried to pick one of his more influential that i saw a lot of people copying after the fact but you could argue that's that's also um uh, college dropout too um in an age where there was a lot of gangster rap shit or he was on a label that was full of gangster rap shit and he came out the way he did with the other that way. made people you know a little more open about like being themselves and not having to be like a street dude. You can actually be like a regular dude on a street label. Um, so I definitely understood. I, I went back and forth, but I switched it up last minute. And then Marshall Mathers LP is his, that's considered his best project, generally speaking. And that's like peak Eminem. Um, I want to say it went diamond. I got to double check that, but I think that went 10 times platinum that turned him in a, into a that stamped him into a super duper star and i think he's been eating off that ever since although i do like the, the album after that too but i think after that it was kind of yeah downhill from there but that's the one even though i like the debut album too but it just it didn't have the exact same impact as that one this this peak marshall right here like, that shit was crazy facts. absolutely i agree with those those, those are good picks you so, teased one with that Nelly, and I got that on there too. I'll go ahead. You have that Nelly too. You gotta have that. Yeah. I, As I call, a Nelly oh, hater, tell me why you have that on there. Nah, because I, I have. I'm. You know, I don't fuck with Nelly like that, but hater. I had I'm to. I, I'd be say it out loud. I'd be hating if I didn't. I like. I didn't have this on my list. I call. I was talking to Jay. I said, "Bro, what's the first album you think of when I say Midwest rap?" And he said, "Nigga, the Nelly Country Grammar, bro." Mm, it's on Midwest Swing. Down, like, down, on, baby. Yo, street in the rain. <laughs> it, it ain't that bad. It's not that banging. Like, let's be clear. It's not banging. Let's be very clear. It's not banging. Um, but it, it was huge. Ten times platinum, another diamond plaque. So uh, you got to come on, man. It's, uh, I, I'm not listening to it. It's got two good records that hold oh up to this God, day. But stop. It, <laughs> album's a classic. It's essential. So to put this on here, like you said, you can't skip this, man. Yeah, and no. I remember when this shit came out. And we was like, it was that meme where that white lady making that face where you like, mm, that, what? Okay, I ain't yeah. no fucking with it. Because you just heard it everywhere and it wasn't like anything else. Um, and of course, we're speaking of the country grammar song, the video, just Nelly. Just In front of the, the arch. Whole, huh? In front of the arch, front repping front the, the arch, loo strong. The jerseys, Niggas hadn't really that. repped the loo like that. Yeah, man, it was just new. It was dope. Yeah. The, ling the lingo was different, man. So we ate it up. Vocal was out, the, the clothing line. Like Nelly, for people that may have missed that generation that don't know, dude, he was a big fucking star. We talk about Kanye and M being the biggest stars from the, the Midwest. Like Nelly is on their ass. Facts. And longevity is probably the only thing that beats him out. Because yeah. they've been a lot relevant longer, but when we're talking about peak, yeah, Nelly at his peak is right there. That's a fact. <clears throat> and that album and the, the St. Lunatics that came out to that, I was a big Murphy Lee fan. He got an on deck interview. You guys go back in the archives and can find that somewhere. But I was just this whole movement and fan because it was different. I was it. I was there for Cornell Haynes, this album and the Nellyville album. I chose this one over the Nellyville because again, debut really yeah. broke down the door with the style. Uh, so that's why I have that one on my list. But sure. man, Country Grammar can't be denied. Yeah, no, nah, that's a fact. What else you got? Two is, is, you it, is there not... anyone that you still think that I may have? Or do you think at this point? Yeah, you probably have a common album. I'm not sure if we have the same one, but probably the best one. That, well, we both probably agree on what his best album is. I have that one on there. Yeah, for B. sure. I got okay, that too. So we both got Common B. For me, that's like the blueprint of the Midwest. Ooh. Like that shit is like a blueprint ad. Like, like that was it. That shit was fucking perfect, nigga. Yeah. I remember when that came out, trying to deny it. The video, I was trying to act like I didn't fuck with it. Like it was a dope ass video that had Tahari. You remember that video? Yeah, hell yeah. That shit was fire. The rollout behind it. This when Kanye was hot as fucking fish grease. Everything about this album was perfect. This is one of the perfect hip hop albums in my opinion. It's common B. So that had to be on my list. What you got to say about it? I'm going to tell you, because I, I had it too, and I wasn't a Common fan, but I remember no. I remember when Common was hot when he first, when he came out late 90s, early 2000, that like water for chocolate, a lot of people like. But Common, a lot of people don't remember, Common went on like that electric, yeah, like, man, you doing some dance. Shit. Yeah, doing like, some I, he was, he went left on some other shit, and then niggas thought it was over with. They were like, okay, yeah, cut, it's a wrap. 
<laughs> but what then he linked up with good music and he put that B out and niggas was like, oh shit. Okay. Like nigga. So that that's why I thought, in my opinion, it was it was definitely worth being on this list. It got it was one of the few albums that got a double XL too. Um deservedly so. Absolutely. Uh the album goes crazy. Still holds up too, man. Super, super banging album. Um uh, thank Kanye for that, man. Oh, yeah, Kanye yeah. put his foot in that motherfucker. No lie. Yeah. I have a mixtape that you probably have. In I don't three... have a mixtape on here. Oh, a well, Big Sean Detroit. Ooh. I feel like that, that opened a door for the new age of Midwest. Didn't have to be Eminem. It ain't have to be too gangster Detroit trick trick type shit. But here go the second generation of lyricists after B. I feel like that that was opening the door for Big Sean style the playfulness the things he does on a track to make him stand out as an artist detroit was that so that mm. was essential i feel like in my midwest listening I, I i battled with this but i ended up putting big sean in here but i just took his best body of work which is dark sky paradise oh, fuck um that. i that i just took i'm looking at he's one of the better skilled rappers out of the midwest to come in the last 10 12 years and then you know what I'm saying? Like that's his best work. So that's I, I added that, but you just made me think of something. What you said mixtape. Okay. And you probably forgot this person was even from the Midwest. Okay. That Wiz Khalifa cushion orange juice. Mm, Pittsburgh considered the Midwest. For sure. Was that East that's Coast? That's gotta be. I think that's the Midwest. East Coast. That's East Coast. Yeah, Pittsburgh. What, East Coast. what coast is that? That's the, the his inner East Coast. <laughs> Somebody let me know, man. Pittsburgh is the East Coast, man. We've been oh, no. that. I, you might be right. I thought that was the East Coast. But we, that's I don't know. All right, maybe that that's a, okay. East we East on the fence with that. I need somebody to let me know what do we, what do they consider Pittsburgh? Because when, when I think Philly, I think East Coast. That's a fact. But they're in the same state. Y'all cases is further in. You know, Pittsburgh is one of the most segregated cities in the america so that may go to your midwest argument mm. just a little fun fact there it's like the there was a poll taken it's like one of the top three i want to say racist cities in america Damn, as far really? as segregation yeah absolutely i say Crazy fact. we um, never thought that about pittsburgh um two that i'm sure you may not have and one you probably do because it's bone come on now east 1999 of course this was this album right here was an essential album for my fucking childhood. I remember middle school to age myself when this shit came out. This shit was, this was next level. This was different. This was a big album. This shit was everywhere. This shit, you had, like, you weren't cool if you weren't listening to Bone, dude. That was like flat the fuck out. Yeah. Bone, Bone was super, super big. Uh, they were on the harmonizing, dumb early. Yes. The, the triplet flow. Similar to three six, yes. um, similar to what people rap like now, Migos, etc. Bone was huge, big star. It's a lot of Bone fans too. I'm talking mm -hmm. about like they got a loyal fan base, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's and it's worldwide cult like, following. Who a cult following? Fat. Yep, there you go. They got. They definitely have a cult following. Uh, Bone was huge. East 1999 is a classic, um, in my opinion. I bought that CD probably Thanks. three times. Um, so yeah, it was definitely on mine. Um, I've got somebody you ain't got on here, but you're going to be like, damn, I should have had this on here, though. Mm. Going back to Michigan, but not Detroit. The first time I heard of a rap group or a rapper out of Michigan was Dayton Family. Shut up, man. Damn it. I should have said that. FBI. First, man. My FBI album. I, not, I just knew you didn't have that. Listen, first of all. I was going to do a whole spiel about how you wasn't on it. And everything. I do this. Ah, I do this. God. Yeah, I know. It's, it yellow, hurts. That yellow FBI CD, you don't know nothing about that. I know a little put bit. Put you on that. I had to put you on that. Yeah, you probably did. Yes, you probably that, did. That Dayton family, that was one. That FBI, like that, that shit. I think Poe may have put me on it because his uncle or something put him on it. But man, that shit, like ah, that I, it was just different, man. Them niggas was mm -hmm. talking shit that they was talking real deal shit, man. <laughs> Still to this day. I think them niggas got arrested for having a shootout for real with the FBI. Like it was some real deal shit, even with their music. One of the niggas got killed on some like some some some. I don't forgot what it was, but it's a whole story. Look up the Dayton family and the story behind it. But it's, it's that album FBI, man. That's one of my favorite albums. Yeah, 
Nah, that um, I I wasn't super on it, but I remember being put on it. And I remember people used to think they were from Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> I did too. Yep, I used to think that. Too. But nah, they from Flint. They yep, from Flint, Flint Michigan. Absolutely. Yep. Um, I'm gonna listen to that when I get up when we get done. That that was my shit, nigga. I'm waking up in the morning with problems <laughs> on my mind. That was my shit. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Uh, I got two more. Okay. Um, actually, I got three more. I'm going to go back real quick to Cleveland. I've got to go Kid Cudi. I know that's not necessarily your bag, but Man on the yeah. Moon, the debut album, was, it was super influential on that emo that rap tip. If that um, wasn't mentioned, people were yelling at us about that. Cause I mean, yeah, yeah, no, for I sure. Forgot it. But no, and that's another one. You want to know somebody with a cult following? That's another one. Um, Kid Cudi, super influential. You prefer his acting <laughs> over yes. his music. That's way, fair. way bigger fan of his acting. <laughs> Shout out to How to Make It in America, <laughs> season one. And Man, two. listen, supremely underrated TV show. That was before his time. Facts. Um, but I, I, the music, is on my, in my opinion, is cool, too. I fuck with some of his music. Um, I'm not that big of a fan, but I can deal with the first, second, and maybe, I think, one of the more later ones. But um, he's got an interesting documentary on Amazon, man. Y'all check it out. If y'all are like, dude, no I don't way. get it. Why is he? I don't know. No what way it. he got a documentary. Yeah, the Why? documentary's pretty dope, too, man. It's oh, very man, well done. <laughs> Tough. It's good, bro. Like, it, like documentaries, I in my I, opinion, I just don't get it. I ain't, I'm, I'm, that's what makes these documentaries funny. good, bro. Like I'm if hating you, to be funny, but I just do not get the 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 pull of. I just never have understood. I like it, day and night, but I don't understand past that. Bro, there there's it. a handful of documentaries out right now that if you've ever looked at, you mm -hmm. can look at Travis Scott documentary on Netflix. If you don't understand the hype, you can watch that Juice World's documentary. If you don't, if you like, bro, why are niggas talking about Juice World? Watch that. And the same for Kid Cudi and Trip XXX Tentacion. If you're yeah. like, I don't get the hype, I missed it, I'm too old, I'm too young, whatever, watch those documentaries. And, and you'll be like, oh, I guarantee you, after every last one of them, you'll be like, oh, okay, okay. Hmm. You may not be like, nigga, I'm finna go buy this nigga catalog, but you'll be like, Just oh, I see. Perspective. He had a lane that he's talking to these people, and this is why they fuck with him. Hmm. It'll make sense. Interesting. Shout out my guy Sam G. He fuck with Kid Cuddy heavy. Kid Cuddy hard guy. though, bro. I wouldn't go that far. Um, Low. For you though, side note, to get you more interested in a television show, The Bear, same pace as How to Make It in America. That's it's that I couldn't put that my finger on it, but that's it. Same mm -hmm. type of pacing and and storytelling style, and when you're immersed in like the background of where they are, like it's it's just like that, but better. You pouring the BP ninety three gas fire best show of this year. I can't wait till them Emmys come out next year. People know what I'm talking about. Mm. What you um, to him? I had three more and they all come from the same city. <laughs> uh, excuse me, two more so, and they come from the same city. Okay. Um, Chicago. <sighs> this was tough. The first Chicago act. Um, again, I'm speaking for essential albums myself. I'm talking box. I'm talking ninety two Q. It was it was a debate. I had to go fact check, but crucial conflict, the, oh, final, the final tick. Seat. I got yeah. Listen, hey, obviously the single hey, but I I bought the whole album and I thought the whole album was fire. Th this was just before Do or Die reached our area. I about Do or Die. Do it. <laughs> Ooh, that, I forgot about that Pope Pimp, man. That Pope Pimp came Jeez. out. It came oh, out the same smash. year, but it came out about seven months after this. And so that's when I had I had to I had to look up Adrenaline Rush, Poe Pimp, and Hey, and I said I had to see which ones came out first. And Hey, a Crucial Conflict, Final Tick came out first, so I have to give it to that. That was the first time that I personally got put on Chicago hip hop, and they talking Chicago shit on all three of those: the Pimp shit with the Do or Die, yeah, do the or Gang die. shit hey. with Crucial Conflict, and and Twister. And so it's just, they, they talk in Chicago culture from a street perspective. And so those, I had to pick one. I'm going crucial conflict, but all three of those are essential. Yeah, let's do it. I forgot about that. You're right. That, those are essential. Absolutely. <laughs> and the artist is too. Die. During that time period, an artist that was different kind of before Kanye, but similar, I would say is Bump J. I remember okay. he had a big push. He never really had a chance to, to meet. He didn't his... have a chance to grow up because he got locked up. But yeah, he yeah, had yeah. a big push. If you want an artist that you may not have heard of from Chicago, go check out some Bump J. He got a Gangsta Grills, I believe. I think so. Oh, true. Yeah. He think he got a Gangsta Grills. 
Man, let us know. Uh, of course, you today's work? artist, your man, Freddie Gibbs. Oh, okay. Well, oh, yeah, 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 yeah for sure. West. Yeah, Gary, Indiana. Yeah. I, Quiet right now for reasons that we know about and have discussed on the On Deck TV podcast that I find hilarious, but Freddie Gibbs has to be respected as a Midwest artist. Listen, man. Yeah, because you got you got to take them projects that he did the band the bandana. Yeah, uh, you know what is, I mean. The joints really that he is. done with Static Selector, like those, they getting Grammy nominations and shit. Like Gary Indiana wasn't on the Grammy map no. past Michael Jackson, a bro. Facts. So you got to give him that. Yes, facts. Uh, let us know, man. What's some of y'all essential Midwest albums? I'm sure there's some Tech Nine fans out there that are throwing their phones out of the window right now because we didn't mention them. Um, just sure did. Congratulations, Tech Nine fans. Yeah, shout out to Tech Nine um, and whoever else that everybody bangs with. Y'all let us know, though, for real. On Deck TV show on uh, Instagram and uh, YouTube. Let us know in the comments, man, who y'all fuck with. What's an essential Midwest album to you guys? Um, let's get to wins or losses. Uh, win or loss, the Nas directed Supreme Team documentary dropped over the weekend, three part series on Showtime. Was this a W or an L? Man, it's a W because I I love this type of like story and investigative journalism, journalism, hip hop history, all of that. Like I'm into it for the stories of the crews that used to be around, like the, the LL part. Boy, I was hyped when he was on there talking about the parties and shit. That shit was dope. But I don't think that it dived enough into it in the sense of just what was the, the goings on, the logistics. I like to know that. Sometimes they don't get that deep. That's a me personal thing. But overall, it's a W. Uh, check it out. Some you think hours. you think it was too biased, or they just they only touched the surface? So it was very surface level, and I feel like just did those guys. And I ain't again. I ain't trying to get them to get on there and incriminate, yeah, incriminate themselves. I ain't trying to get that. But just give me some more than what I already got from the YouTube docs and all the other shit. I guess because I'm engulfed in that type of stuff. But I feel like it could have dived a little bit deeper and just. If if you can't get the the information about like the 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 drug aspect of it, like the LL part was cool. Get more rappers on there. Talk about how it like kind of affected their careers. Like Nah should have talked more about the the money bag killing, and LL should have been able to talk about more about being in them parties. It would have been cool if Nori would have been there. He from Queens. Um, just I mean Lloyd Banks, if you can get him. I know it's a reach because of Fifty Beef, but I mean what he got to lose? Shit, he I don't really fuck with Fifty. Just if if you're not gonna have the people who are directly in it, like the random niggas that was a part of their crew, didn't give me no good information. So mm. replace them niggas with the rappers and give me some rap stories surrounding some of their parties and I'm good to go. I just didn't get that. But I do like the fact that they're exploring the story. I didn't I, I've only seen part one. Is mm. are Ja and Irv in there at all? Uh yeah. Gotti in the last minute, you know he do his thing. Like, yeah, of for course sure. he come through, nigga. I, storyteller of the year, nigga. Yeah. Even fat joke can have a storyteller offer. And <laughs> you, you figure out who gon' take you to the best place but yeah he got he did his thing in the last episode 100 percent. real quick and it's the last thing on that because i am gonna finish it i did i did like part one uh but i thought ll was the best part that nigga, um, that, that is the best part that that spoiler alert that's the best part of the dog oh that's some slaughter <laughs> um do you remember 50 get richard i trying movie yeah he had a dude that was supposed to be supreme <laughs> in the movie <laughs> I'm not pitching this face. I don't know if y'all remember that, but, but the nigga name was Majestic. <laughs> yeah, I do remember. And at yeah, the end of the, yeah, the name, okay, I do remember that. And at the end of the movie, he killed him and then went on stage and performed in the Bulletproof <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, like, come nuts. on, Fifth. <laughs> that was nuts right there. That was nuts. 100% nuts. People don't talk about that enough. That was wild. I forgot about that, but the, the killing and then going performing on the stage. That was <laughs> nuts right there. And the credits rolled out to that, didn't it? <laughs> oh, God, boy. Shout out, that's power. That's, that was giving niggas a preview of power. That's some power ghost shit right there. <laughs> Pop this nigga right here in front of a million people and nobody nigga seen burnt him. The, that nigga burnt them backstage and went on stage and performed. I was like, what? <laughs> With the gun in his waist, probably. <laughs> hey, come like, on, <laughs> bro. Anyway, uh, win or a loss, man. Snoop Dogg is uh, back in Hollywood. He's co-starring with Jamie Foxx in a new Netflix vampire movie called Day Shift. Are you here for that? I'm here for it, man. I, um, I'm here for everything that Snoop does. It's Jamie Foxx talented. So I hope this is good. Did it, was it a comedy? I didn't get to see the preview. Yeah, but- no. Nah, it's, a, it's a little action movie, but it's 
there's gonna have some comedy in it if Jamie Foxx. Of course, yeah, Jamie Foxx is in it. It look it look alright though. It, it look watchable. Snoop super winning out here, man. He holding it down for hip hop. I saw Glasses Malone on Twitter say, as Snoop starts to do more, he seriously started to put him up against Hov as like the top top dog in hip hop. I see you making that face because you're a whole Avenger. Glad, glad, yeah, glasses got a. Glasses from the show. show. But come on, man. I get it. I get it, man. Glass is gonna make it. He's biased. Clearly, 100%. he's one hundred percent biased. Shout out Snoop, man. Look, win or loss, last one. Speaking of fifty, he gets his first Emmy nomination. Not for power, though, but for the Super Bowl halftime show. Outstanding mixing for a variety series or special event, man. Win or loss? Uh, this is a L. <laughs> Big L. <laughs> All these TV shows in 50 got out. Not good enough Emmy quality as the Emmy nominations were rolled out today. Step your production game up, Phil. No, I'm... I'm just jabbing here, but yeah, this is a, a, a L still because he got all these TV shows <laughs> and the halftime hanging up down is what he get the Emmy now for. But he can put it on his resume now, though. No, I that price can still go Emmy's up, though. Thing. Yeah, price is definitely, you're right. Yeah. Emmy produced, now I'm an Emmy award winning or nominated. Yeah, fuck that. Production house, you're right. That is a W there. Changed my mind that quick, you're right. But um, this is dope. I didn't even know that they had an Emmy category for this. Live Me neither. performance show, so that's that's pretty fire. And to see that Dr. Dre got recognized for that dope ass show for a hip hop strictly being a hip hop show, that's fire. Yeah, that's a W. That's a W for hip hop on the real shit. Um, nice. man, going to YouTube for the on deck of the week. Uh, man, shout out my guy C E underscore E S eighty fifty one. Um, man, frequent commenter, man, we appreciate it. He said, "Dope show as usual." We were speaking on the uh, BET Awards. This was for the BET Awards winner losers. He said, my ex-wife is a sheriff's deputy and they run the county jails in Cali. Lou was correct. When an inmate gets beat up, normally it's because someone accidentally opened the wrong door when the inmate was being moved. This was, of course, uh, in response to the Lucci. We were wondering how that shit happened. Mm-hmm. Um, he went on to say that uh, this dude is definitely in isolation, probably with the snitches, the pedophiles and the gay inmates, yes. or else he would have never made it to trial. This is where the term on site comes from. Jail politics di- dictate if you see dude and can get at him, then you better be on go or you're getting it. So hmm, that's good information. Appreciate that. He, Absolutely, he always man. on the Facebook feeds too. A hundred percent, hundred percent, man. Super dope. We appreciate everybody that comments on the YouTube, man. Thank you guys. My guy D Dub also said, man, uh, he shouted out the founder. He said, yeah, that that was absolute flames. Um, dope hmm. show as always. So appreciate that. Um, what you got to put me on? Uh, one put on R.I.P. to Tony Sekiro, Pauly, off the Sopranos. Well, my shirt and dedication for him, man. That was a, I'm a big Sopranos fan. Uh, so he passed just yesterday. So man, R.I.P. to that. Go run the Sopranos back. Nothing new for my put ons. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of Larry June. I put you on him. You did not. But <laughs> perfect summertime music, man. If you're not familiar with Larry June or you are, just double back, man. Listen to it. It's perfect mood for this time of year. Um, specifically the orange print and out the trunk. Jay and uh, FSP cameraman were talking about those being classic albums in our chat today, and they are absolutely right. So shout out Larry June, man. If you ain't on him, get on him. Hot he ain't gonna be on. It ain't gonna be at the fucking the festival, man. I was going to check him out if he had a little good, little intimate spot mm. down here in the A, but it's that Music One Fest. Oh, no. Nah. Definitely not doing that. I ain't fucking with that. Uh, mm. The Larry Jew album, I fuck with is that adjust to the game. That shit is be kicking flames. Shit, I like, I like, it, 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 and it's positive too. It ain't like a lot of shoot them when you just don't want to hear no, because I've been trying to, I've been real cousin of the, what I've been listening to lately. So it ain't a lot of shoot them up bang bang shit. Nah. It's just like, nigga, I'm chilling, I'm getting money, I'm drinking smoothies and green tea. It's dope, dope. That's nice grown, man. It's, it's investment, it's chill nice. shit. It's just vibes. I, yeah, f- I fuck with Larry June heavy. And yeah, that's, that's funny because I don't fuck with Dom like that. Rapper right now. Him and, and Payroll may be my favorite two rappers outside the obvious right now. They they're 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 definitely on the same tree. Like yeah. low key. Yeah. Just um, different coast. What you putting us on this week? Quick put on uh new music this week. I'm very interested to hear what the CMG compilation sounds like. Mm. Um 
that Gotti has positioned himself to have a strong God, label in the game right now. So I'm wondering, even just signing uh, the Glorilla Shorty and I think maybe the whole camp, I don't know. But um, I'm interested to see if he can capitalize on it with a solid project, though. Like you make you making the signings and the splashings and you grabbing everybody from Memphis and all of okay cool but what the project sound like can you have a hit on them? Mm, that's a good question. I'm, Gotti challenge, I'm challenging hit, Gotti. Gotti can make a hit though. That's the last thing you probably got. That's to worry true. About with Gotti, I'm excited to see this next phase of his career. Like we from us sitting and talking and realizing how business from a business standpoint, how intelligent he was, just and how he modeled himself out the baby in fifty. Mm-hmm. To see this shit grow into fruition is dope. Uh, it's really, and I'm rooting to see CMG be bigger than Cash Money because I know when we heard him talking, that's what he would. That was always been the goal, nigga. How long ago was that when we heard him say that? Twenty mid, years, mid two thousands, bro. Yeah, so like he been on this shit, and to see that shit grow out, and it, nigga been adamant and just keeping to it, ups, downs, low key, yep. high key, hits, no hits, still been consistently yo Gotti so shout out yo. to you. um shout out to Gotti man I'm checking that CMG out um I'm also gonna be on my Midwest kick now that we didn't name a couple of these albums I gotta double back put that Dayton family in ASAP nigga <laughs> while I'm playing the I show gotta, I gotta double back on some of these man hey we appreciate y'all tapping in as always uh youtube.com leave comments like subscribe we appreciate it uh what else you got for us that's it, man. We appreciate you guys checking out the On Deck TV show. I am Spike Lou. We out. Yes, sir.